So the move command primarily allows us to populate the registers with data. It could be immediate value. So let's just do a test. If we want RAX to take the value of, let's say, five, then we could just type move without the E and then the register that we want, in this case, RAX, comma, and then it could be any numeric value. So I'll just put a five here and I'll click compile and we have no errors, so we're good. And if we click continue, then we can see two things. Number one, everything executed, we can see that RAX has a value of five, just like we wanted. But we also got this error message down here that says invalid error reference, basically a segmentation fault or a segmentation violation. That's what the, the V means. And the reason this happened is because it's like we're driving a car off a cliff and not stopping. It didn't actually exit. So this is essentially an operating system reporting that we didn't properly exit the program. Our memory went out of bounds. But don't worry about this right now. We're going to solve this in the future when we get to function calls. It's a harmless error that won't stop us. So let's move some more data around and I'll show you how we step through line by line. So let's say that we want to transfer the value from Rax, RAX to let's say B, RBX. So move RBX and we can just put RAX after. So move to RBX, the value that's an RAX. And now I'm going to compile it again. We have to compile every time and Let's click step. So if we look here in the disassembly, we can see that our instructions are mirrored here. Our move RAX5 is right here and move RBX RAX is right here. And you can also see that the hex is being displayed as well, which is the, the raw machine code and the instructions like we saw in the first video. And more than that, we can see the memory address where our instructions actually live. And this box that's highlighting this entire entry, this means that this is the next instruction to be executed. It hasn't been executed yet. And our program right now is sort of in like a in a frozen debug state where we can slow down the execution to inspect things, which is perfect for what we need. So right now we can see RAX has a value of five, which means this instruction has been executed. But RBX is still zero. So we can see the highlight here means that this one is the next one to be executed. So if we click step, which just goes one step at a time, then we can see now that RBX just got the value of five, which RAX had, right? So we transferred five to RAX, and then we just copied it to RBX. That's another kind of technicality here. When we think of move, we think it no longer lives in the place from which we moved it from. But really, move is just a copy in assembly. So we copied the value of 5 to RAX, and then we copied the value in RAX, whatever is in there, in this case, it's 5, to RBX. We can also just compile it and continue to run all of it at once. So we see everything is zeroed again. If we click continue, you see 5.5 five, and we get our error message because the code has executed downward and left our last line of code instead of instead of quitting or exiting. So you can see we have a decimal immediate literal value. We have register to register. We can also do hex. Let's do one through three, one, two, three, four to RCX. So if we compile and we can step, we see RAX just executed. Now we're on this instruction step. This one finished. This one has not been done yet. We can see RCX does not have one, two, three, four step. And now we're on this one here. Uh, so we're done with everything that we did. We're about to get that error message. Uh, and you can see that RCX was executed and it does indeed have the value of one, two, three, four in hex. And you're going to find that most of these values are going to be hex just because of the ease of translation to the different representations, particularly binary. And one thing to notice here, you see how the highlighted instruction, even though it's not one of ours, and if we step, we're going to get that error message, right? Because we don't really own this memory address. But let me, let's run this again, and I'll show you what I was going to say. If you look at any of the highlighted instructions, you'll see that there's a register in here that's very special. It updates on its own, and it actually holds that value, 004010007, the same thing here. And this is the instruction pointer. So this is the register that the CPU uses to keep track of where it's executing. This box is as a result of the instruction pointer remembering and incrementing downwards, a constant march downwards. Uh, so without this register, the CPU could not function as we know it. Uh, so if we try and change this, because you can imagine that if we're trying to jump around code, you should be able to change this. So let's try and move it. So if you move RIP and let's just say the top which is this right here. So if we compile this, then we're going to see that we get an error message, which says operand type mismatch for move. So 
our IP is protected. We can't move directly to it. There's some commands to modify it. And that's how we get to, to control flow and control the, the line of execution. But we'll get to that pretty soon in the videos, but you can't just copy it to it directly. All the other registers here we can copy to freely, but there's two that we need to be careful with. One is the stack pointer, RSP, and one is the base pointer, RBP. These are related to the stack, which by the way, we can just sort of ignore. For now, it won't be an issue. You can write to them, but as we get to actual programs, then we're gonna need to pay attention to these. So everything else is pretty much general purpose. So RSP, RBP, and RIP are the ones that we should avoid writing to if possible, unless we are being very specific about it. And the move command is pretty versatile. You can also copy from memory, but right now we don't have any memory allocated to us that we can test it with. So we're gonna have to do that in the future, but in case you have an immediate need, you can copy, let's say to the RDX register, and you could put something like 00401000, and we don't actually need those leading zeros there. These brackets in this case with the move command, this means that we want to go to this address in memory and bring up whatever is there. So instead of it being treated as a literal value, it's gonna take a, a detour. It's gonna look in the memory, look up the address that you put in the brackets, and then give you whatever was there. So a better example, in this case, it's uh, some hex here. So we'd actually pick up eight of these bytes in this example. If we run this, then we'll see that we did pick up the value. It's, a, it's backwards, which we'll go over why that is, but we'll see that we have 48, then C7, which is 48, C7, and then C0, C0 is here, and then five with a lot of zeros. And then we actually got more than that. We got the 48 of the next instruction. Uh, and that's because we're getting eight bytes, but we'll go into all those details. So this is how you copy from memory and access it if that's what you needed. So the move command is, is super versatile. You can copy immediate values. You can copy register to register. You can copy hexadecimal. You can copy from memory into a register. And there are many variations of the, the move command itself too. We're gonna probably come across one or two other variations as we write some programs, but, but these are the basic uses of the move command. So what I would do is get used to writing it. It's gonna be one of the most used commands that you, that you use, one of the most used instructions. Uh, so you move without the E and then any register names like R15, a comma, we need a comma. And then right here will be whatever value you want it to go into that move. Two more quick things. If you wanna write some comments, then there's two different ways to do it. One of them is to use a pound sign. So you could say, this is a comment. And the other method is to use like a C style where you have slash and then the asterisk, this is a comment. So you could insert this one within the code itself, like right here and that should be fine. We see it runs fine. The error is just about the memory like before. Uh, so those are two kinds of comments that you can use. Assembly is a little tricky sometimes with the comments because some assemblers use different symbols and some assemblers have different styles across different architectures. But for this one, it's just a pound or the C style long form comments. So next up, what we can do is work with some arithmetic. We can add and subtract some of these values, combine them together and just get a, a better grasp of how we can manipulate the data and process the data on the CPU. So if this was your first time writing assembly code and assembling and running it, then congratulations, you are now an assembly programmer. And it's a really cool thing to, to learn to do. You know that these instructions are not being sort of handled by any intermediary compiler, and they're just being translated directly to the instructions that are gonna be executed by the CPU. So I think it's one of the best ways to boost our understanding of the CPUs themselves and how they operate and what the capabilities actually are uh, with the circuitry. So in the next video, we'll go over some arithmetic and just continue the process so we can build some programs uh, within the next few videos. So I look forward to that and thanks very much for, for joining me. See you soon.